Body dysmorphic disorder is a psychiatric disorder that causes people to misperceive that there is something about their appearance that is defective or flawed in some way. And because of this, they have preoccupations. They, they think about it all the time. It's extremely distressing to them. People with body dysmorphic disorder can have these concerns about really any body part. Um, for some reason, it happens to be most often that from the neck up, they have concerns about um, aspects of their face or their hair or their skin. And so typically people will have maybe three different concerns or more um, about their appearance. A very common symptom is that they'll check their appearance in a mirror um, or the reflective surfaces throughout the day. Sometimes they get stuck in mirrors. They'll often go to a dermatologist because skin concerns are so common in our country um, or a cosmetic surgeon to have things uh, uh, repaired or have things um, changed in some way and so seeking cosmetic surgery actually having it done or at least considering it is very common in people with BDD and unfortunately these treatments don't seem to work so actually about 50% of people with BDD in their lifetime will be hospitalized psychiatrically um, about a quarter of them so about 25% of people with BDD will attempt suicide We've done research to try to understand how people with BDD, how their brains are processing uh, visual information and emotional information. And so we've done primarily brain imaging research using something called functional magnetic resonance imaging or fMRI. We found that people with a body dysmorphic disorder have abnormalities in the way the brain's processing visual information. And a, a general pattern that seems to be emerging from it is that the systems that their brains are using for processing holistically, so being able to kind of capture the whole image, say the, the whole face, kind of the main structure of it, and also the spatial relations between different features, the brains are interactive for capturing that kind of holistic information. Um, and so what we think that may be happening related to what they experience their symptoms is that if they're seeing details about their appearance, so let's say that they see small blemishes, small imperfections that everybody has, and they do probably have these, they may be very small, but if their brains are not able to contextualize this, that it actually looks small relative to their whole face because their brains aren't putting together the big picture, then it appears to them these things look prominent. I think one of the biggest barriers for people getting better from BDD is first even them recognizing that they have BDD because people with BDD tend to have low insight and what I mean by that is that they because they're perceiving that there's things defective about their appearance they naturally think that the problems with their appearance that their problem is not necessarily a psychiatric problem or psychological problem it's an appearance problem they feel like they're reacting as if anybody would react if they had such defective and ugly appearance. Once they can get into treatment and once they can be identified as having BDD, there are some effective treatments. So the types of treatments that can be effective for people are medications, certain medications, and there's certain types of psychotherapy that can be effective. The type of psychotherapy that's been shown to be effective in BDD is called cognitive behavioral therapy. And some people with BDD may also need other types of psychotherapy depending on what some of their kind of additional individual issues are. We're currently doing research to understand more about the brain in people with BDD and also people with anorexia nervosa. So we're doing a study right now where we're looking at how people with BDD and anorexia may be similar or different in their visual processing and emotional processing. And we're doing uh, brain imaging experiments primarily to understand this better. And so if people are interested in participating, either who have anorexia or have had it or who have body dysmorphic disorder, then it greatly helps us be able to understand more about what's going on so that we can develop improved treatments for both disorders.